Hey guys, this is Mr. Bradstreet and Coach Eichel, and this is Unit Seven Point Two. In this di- in this uh, podcast, we're going to be talking about cladograms and dichotomous keys. Two ways of looking at uh, this, these taxonomy things that we've been talking about, and some various diagrams that go along with them. All right, so a cladogram just shows evolutionary relationships of groups of organisms, and think of a clade as something that shares something in common with something that it evolved from. So when we're looking at a cladogram, our ancestral traits are always going to be at the bottom or towards the left. Those are going to be the oldest, and our derived or accumulated traits, the ones that evolved later through the lineage, are going to be towards the top or towards the right of a cladogram. So in this diagram we got going on up here, Coach Eichel, which one of these would be, which trait would be the most ancestral? Well, let's start with the bottom and to the left, and we see fish. Fish are going to be right here. Okay, the fish are going to be blue, so that means they're going to have a derived backbone. So everything that's in the blue is going to have a backbone. So fishes, amphibians, mammals, and reptiles are all four going to have a backbone. As we move up, we see amphibians changes to this green color. Well, green denotes four limbs. So amphibians, mammals, and reptiles are all going to have four limbs. And then the last is going to be the watertight egg, which are going to be mammals and reptiles. So taking another example here, just from everyday life, if we're looking at transportation, uh, making a cladogram of that, wheels would be the most ancestral because all of those types of transportation have wheels. And wings would be considered the most derived because if we look at this, only the plane and the space shuttle, so only everything from here up has wings. Whereas everything from here up has an engine and everything from here up has wheels. Okay, so if we're gonna construct a cladogram on our own, We have listed here, there's five organisms and a couple of different characteristics listed about them. So let's look at uh, what some of these characteristics are. And so there's four of the five organisms that have four limbs. Three of them are gonna have fur. And only two of them have uh, no tail. So then we're gonna start from the the derived characteristic and we got the fish which was the loner in here so the fish is going to have to be at the bottom everything has to derive from the fish well the thing that the fish and lizard shared or the lizard evolved from the fish was four limbs it walked on land so it came next okay so now we're still talking about four limbs at this unit right here well what's different from the lizard and the tiger was that the tiger gained fur so it progressed up and then you got the gorilla and chimpanzee which both didn't have a tail. So the tail was lost at this point, but then they grouped off from here and then there. But just looking at these, Coach Eichel, how would I know that the tail was lost and the tail shouldn't have been no tail down here and a tail up here? Well, well, because you know the gorilla had a vestigial tail based on these fossil records that we've shown. And if you look, just like similar to humans, here right here at the bottom is what's called a coccyx, which is a vestigial tailbone that they no longer use. So the gorilla we knew had one at one point in time and it lost it somewhere through its evolutionary history. Okay, so here's just one more example for you. Um, Looking at a primate cladogram and it shows you, just to make sure you understand how to interpret these, everything from this point up right here would have a downward pointing nose. So rhesus monkey, chimpanzee, and human. Whereas everything from this point up on the cladogram would have a central eye area. So every, all of these. The only one that doesn't have is the lemurs. They have their eyes more on the side of their head. So that's just these cladograms and how you interpret them. All right, so a phylogenetic tree is a more inclusive diagram than a cladogram. Well, what it shows is it shows branchings. So we start here with these carnivora. And then the carnivora is going to be broken down into three families, the felines, the mustillas, and the canaeas or dogs. So those are going to be split off even further. And the main important thing to look at here is the cats has the least amount of similar, the least in common with a dog. So dogs and beavers are actually, actually that's an otter, not a beaver, have more in common than a cat and a dog. The skunk and the otter have the most in common. So some of these phylogenetic trees can get pretty complicated. Here's a phylogenetic tree that was put together by uh, David Hillis of University of Texas, and it shows a lot of the organisms on Earth. And so you can see here in the center is where the uh, most ancient organisms are. And what's really neat here is we're going to zoom in a little bit on this area right here. So let's zoom in a little bit there. And let's zoom in even a little bit more 
And you can see that that's a really huge diagram, and these phylogenetic trees can get really complicated, but pretty neat too. All right, so Mr. Bradstreet, so which, which of these species would have the greatest genetic difference from Canis lupus? All right, so let's see if we can find Canis lupus on here. That's a wolf, so it's down here. And we're going to compare that to Panthera pardus, which is this leopard up here. And so if we trace back where those two last had a common ancestor, we end up at this point right here. If we look at Lutra Lutra, this uh, otter, the point where it and the Canis lupus branch off, follow them back, it shared a common ancestor right here. So that's A, that's B. If we look at Canis latrans, the coyote, it shared a common ancestor right here, that's C. And so the greatest genetic difference would be the one that's least related, that had a common ancestor the furthest back in time, so that'd be way down here at this one. So it'd be A, Panthera pardus. Okay, makes sense, great. Okay, ready? All right, so what you're telling me is that each branch represents the divergence of two species. So a, a leopard and a domestic cat somewhere down the line shared a common ancestor, correct? Absolutely. We can add one more. Deeper branches represent progressively greater amounts of divergence. So we can add, add another layer, and there was a common ancestor between wolves and cats all the way back here at this point. But because it's further down on the phylogenetic tree or cladogram, they're less closely related than these two are. So if they're on the same branch, that means they're more closely related, correct? Absolutely. All right. Okay, so for part two of this podcast, we're going to look at dichotomous keys. And a dichotomous key is just a device that was created by taxonomists to help identify what an organism is. Di means two, so it's just a set of a paired statement that allows you to figure out what an organism is. So here's an example. So Coach Heichel, if I wanted to know what this thing is down here, how do I figure that out? Okay, well this is very simple. It's kind of like a scavenger hunt. You start with the pieces of information you have and you progressively go through the system and you figure out where you're going. All right, so if you start with 1A, tentacles present. This thing right here, we see has tentacles. So let's go to, it says go to number two now. So we're gonna go to number two. Number two, eight tentacles. Well, that has more than eight tentacles. So it's not an octopus. So let's go to number three. Tentacles hang down. Well, those don't look like they're hanging down to me. Those are kind of lopsided. Most of them are pointing straight up. So it is a sea anemone or what Nemo and Carl live in in Finding Nemo. Makes sense? Yep, that's right. So if you guys have any further questions on cladograms or dichotomous keys, make sure you ask us in class. And that's it. Have a great day.